Hello, welcome to Kingdom Matters with Apostle Gideon. Today we want to look at a question I got asked not long ago on Facebook. And this question is about the electioneering process that is going on in Ghana currently. The question is, can a man of God, specifically a prophet, join a political party? Now, in this video, I want to break the question into two. We will answer first for the Christian, then for the man of God. What we are going to answer now today is... Can a Christian join a political party? That is, become a card-bearing member of a political party. We shall answer the part of the man of God on Thursday by the grace of God. So if you are new here, consider subscribing to this channel as well as turning on the bell for notification. We upload weekly videos that will inspire your faith and inform you on the will of God. Without wasting much time, the answer for whether a Christian can join a political party is yes, but with a lot of caution. And I will explain the caution later on in this video. So yes, a Christian can join a political party. First off, there is no law forbidding the child of God from joining any group if their purpose is not demonic or evil and can be used to help humanity. 1 Thessalonians 5.22 says, We should abstain from all appearance of evil and from all indication. There is no political party in Ghana, for example, that states that they are here for evil. So, so long as a party is not set up to do evil, there is no prohibition for the child of God from being a part of it. Joining a party falls in the place of kingdom expediency. That, that is, your joining of the party should gender for an overall good for your personal self or your soul, the kingdom and the world in general. In 1 Corinthians 10, 23 to 24, it says, All things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. Listen to that. Then it says, All things are lawful for me, but all things edify not. Let no man seek his own, but every man another's worth. So long as our aim for joining a party is not for our selfish interest, but from a sincere heart to bring positive changes to lives, we are not forbidden from joining any political party whatsoever. Actually, Proverbs 29 verse 2 says, When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked bearers rule, the people mourn. Political parties today are an expedient way to power, even for the righteous, if they will rule for the people to rejoice as indicated in the scriptures. It is a channel through which people get close to the place of power. Political parties in the political structures of the world as at now are vehicles through which ideas are being championed, but more so, they are an expedient way to power. Such that without the right party, no matter how good the intentions of a person is, he will not easily get to the place of power to even rule for the people to rejoice, which means they are now one of the key channels to power, even for the Christian. But for any child of God who feels to join a political party or is already in one, you must understand these four things before you make any move. Number one, Christians are called to prioritize God over everything. And that includes your political party. We are expected to place God and his word first over elected officials, even political parties, laws, and even our own self-interest. Luke 14 verse 26 to 27 says, If anyone comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even their own life, such a person cannot be my disciple. And whoever does not carry their cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. That is the expectation of the gospel for a child of God. This means a political party should not contest the place of God in your life. You shouldn't so love a political party that you choose them over God. And never should you support or allow the ways of the party when it runs contrary to the word of God influence you out of the will of God. Now, this is not going to be on a silver platter since most of these parties thrive on propaganda. And when we say propaganda, it's a consented set of messages aimed at influencing the opinions of behavior of large numbers of people, even if it is not true. Upholding God first is often irrational and nearly always countercultural. But this is what it means to be a follower of Christ. So count the calls before you take off with the idea to join one political party or become active in party politics. It is almost impossible to keep the word of God and be obedient to the Lord while doing party politics, especially in Africa, which may demand that you don't speak the truth all the time. In our system here in Ghana, it is difficult to pick just one true Christian doing party politics who has not been influenced negatively one way or the other. So yes, 
Christians can be involved in politics and party politics and join a political party. And yes, we know political system can bring about good and just outcomes which Christians should support, but our political allegiance should never come at the expense of shortchanging the role of God and the gospel of Christ in our lives, and they should never be used to which hand. So if you have the desire to do party politics, you must realize how restrictive and prohibitive party politics actually are to carrying out God's will. Think about that. Number two. The second thing you must realize is that no matter the numbers of Christians who come to power, the kingdom of heaven will never be fully realized through worldly government or carnal politics, but rather through the preaching and the demonstration of the love of Christ and the power of the Holy Ghost. Though you may be able to use political power to create certain conditions that will make the gospel thrive, left to themselves alone, they won't be able to achieve anything of eternal essence. And one thing you must note, no matter who is leader, political offices are not meant for spreading the gospel and you will not find it easy trying it. It will be generally considered an abuse of your office. It will generally be considered an abuse of your office unless you do it secretly. And number three, this third point is crucial and must be thoroughly thought through. Doing party politics, though not evil, will put you in a corner that is going to compromise the gospel in many ways. Are you aware? Number one, being in party A will mean that you are supposed to be opposed to party B and that has a lot of implications for the rejection of your gospel if you want to preach the gospel as well as be a party politician. Some people will totally be turned off from hearing you simply because you belong to a political party. Let me tell you a story. On the 5th of December, a, a very surprising thing happened in the commercial vehicle we were traveling from the Volta region of Ghana. A passenger literally stopped the journey and refused a refund less than halfway into the journey because our driver, the one driving us, showed his political affiliation when we met a political rally on the street. And these were political parties campaigning for the last time before the election. This is how some people are passionate with their political party and joining one means making automatic enemies who wouldn't want to even see your face come to talk of your message. Think about it. Number two, also understand this. If you want to openly live as a Christian and also do party politics, anything that goes wrong with you will be tacked to the gospel and that will demand for an extra level of caution on your side. You must count the cost. The gospel has many enemies who will seize any opportunity to cast doubt on the message. So you need to be a good ambassador out there. This will take more than being a good politician. It will demand that you stay blameless at all levels or else the gospel will be tacked with your shortcomings and made unattractive. So watch out. So finally, as we are ending, if you count the cost and feel led into politics as a Christian, step out there and be an ambassador of Christ, beaming with love and holistically blameless in a wicked and a perverse generation. And always understand that your first allegiance is to God and do not let the politics of the day turn you away from God because no matter what you gain in this world, if you lose your soul, if you fall out because of politics, you gain nothing. God bless you. Thursday we'll look at men of God and their case is different from just any Christian. God bless you and I'll see you in the next video. Have a beautiful day. Bye.